What up y'all? We realize that a lot of you are not subscribed, but are watching the content. Some people are not signed in on through their televisions, so that might be the case. But if it's not, please subscribe to the channel. Also, we have a cash app that we never promote, so if anyone appreciates this content and want to donate, it would be greatly appreciated. We try to push out stories consistently, so, show us some love if you got it. Enough of that though. Okay, so here's a story that has gained a bit of notoriety as of late. We still in Harlem and the Bronx. Sheldon Johnson, who is known on the streets and in jail as Superb, Perb for short, has been accused of the unthinkable. Let's see what media has reported, and what the word on the street is. It starts like this. Twisted tale of murder, an ex-con turned criminal justice reform activist caught, police say, with a head in his freezer. Police say Sheldon Johnson killed a victim at the victim's apartment in the Bronx, dismembered the body, and then carried some of the body parts back to his home in Harlem. Since his release from prison last May, Sheldon Johnson had become a public face of rehabilitation and even redemption. Mr. Johnson, 48, spoke to people about how he had been a big shot in the bloods, had been convicted of attempted murder, and had spent a quarter century behind bars. He was a counselor for at-risk youth at the Queen's Public Defender's Office, and appeared last month on Joe Rogan's popular podcast, where he discussed his incarceration and his work. But Mr. Johnson's success story came to an abrupt halt this week when he was accused of murder. Mr. Johnson, of Harlem, was charged with murder, manslaughter and criminal possession of a weapon on Thursday, in the killing of Colin Small, 44, inside the victim's Bronx apartment, according to police officials. It was unclear on Thursday how Mr. Johnson knew Mr. Small. Sources said Colin Small may have had a beef with Johnson while both were doing time at Sing Sing Prison in Westchester County. Investigators also probed whether the situation was drug-related. Early Tuesday morning, the police received a 911 call regarding gunshots inside an apartment building in the High Bridge neighborhood of the Bronx. At least one neighbor told the police she heard two shots from inside a six-floor apartment, according to an internal police report. Moments later, she heard a person shout, please don't, I have a family. Then, she told the police, two more gunshots rang out, followed by silence. Shortly after hearing the shots, the neighbor saw a man carrying bags and cleaning supplies walk in and out of the apartment, according to the police reports. The neighbor did not recognize the man and told the building superintendent what she had heard and seen. Minutes before calling the police, the building superintendent thought to check the security camera footage. I thought, let me see what I see. When he looked at the footage, Mr. Medina saw a man walking in and out of the apartment. He noticed that the man had changed clothes several times. At one point, he was wearing a dark jacket, khaki pants and a plaid golf cap. At another point, he was wearing a light jacket and a fisherman's hat, holding two bags. On a third occasion, he wore a dark puffy coat, sunglasses and a blonde wig. He said Johnson wheeled a blue bin into the apartment at 2 a.m. and never brought it back out. He brought in the bin, I told them. Why is he bringing in the bin at 2 o'clock in the morning? He's bringing in a bin so late, the super said. We tried to see if he took out the bin. He never took out the bin. I told them, look for a bin. And sure enough, it was there. The super also saw the suspect leaving in the victim's blue Audi and returning in an Uber wearing a blonde wig. He is coming in, he is dressing differently, changing his character, he said. I said, that's not normal, he is hiding something. I thought, I don't know who this man is, but he is coming in and out with a key like he owns the place, the super said. When patrol officers arrived at the apartment on Summit Avenue, near the corner of West 162nd Street, they knocked on Mr. Small's door, and Mr. Johnson opened it. The guy stood there, the super said. They took him out and everything. They looked in the apartment, but they didn't find anything. They apologized, said somebody called, and they have to come. He said Johnson then asked to speak with him. I went back to the house and a neighbor called and said the guy is looking for me, he wants to talk to me, he said. I said, I'm gonna go to him, I'm gonna ask him what he wants, then tell the police what he tells me. That was the plan. But before that meeting could take place, the police returned. They found Johnson inside the apartment, but the discovery was horrifying. A torso and a foot were stuffed inside the blue bin. Police detectives confirmed that the man captured on camera coming in and out of the apartment was Mr. Johnson. The police took Mr. Johnson into custody for questioning soon afterward. 
Chilling surveillance video footage shows Johnson stepping off the sixth floor elevator, looking around cautiously before he slowly walks to the apartment and goes inside. He is seen wearing a dark coat over a yellow hoodie, and lugging a mop and a bag that sources said, was full of cleaning supplies. If I'd gone, you never know what he was going to do, the super said. He was gonna frame me or shoot me or offer me something to get rid of the cameras or something. A tenant said he saw Johnson walking a small dog days before the murder. It feels like the devil just crawled through here last night, he said. The neighbor described him as quiet and a loner. Sometimes we get fooled with the appearance, well-dressed, he looks clean, the tenant said. You are assuming this guy has a professional career, went to work, came back, walked the dog and continued with his personal life. Officials learned that Johnson Jr. had been living in King Towers development in Harlem at the time of the incident. This project is more commonly referred to as, foster projects. Detectives obtained a warrant to search the apartment. Here, they found the rest of Small's body. His severed legs, arms, and the other foot, was alongside Small's head in the freezer. Small had been shot at least once in the head. Roughly 17 hours later, Mr. Johnson was charged with murder. I'm innocent. He yelled to reporters as he was led from the 44th Precinct Station House Thursday afternoon to appear in Bronx Criminal Court. He was held without bail at a late arraignment, where he showed up in a white Kevlar suit and said nothing. Mr. Johnson has spent about half of his life behind bars. In 1997, under the alias Thomas Smalls, he was convicted of criminal possession of stolen property in Manhattan, according to state prison records. Two years later, Mr. Johnson was convicted of attempted murder, robbery and other charges in Manhattan, according to the records. He served the maximum sentence of about 25 years and was released last May. His attempted murder case and long incarceration had prompted public efforts to convince the state to grant him clemency. A fundraising page on the website, NewYorkersForClemency.com, described him as a community leader and mentor, as well as a creative writer and thespian. I thought he was reformed, the dad told the Daily News on Thursday. In his own writings and in other media reports, Mr. Johnson described his incarceration as part of a family legacy of crime and punishment. It began with Johnson's father Sheldon Johnson Sr., whose corrupt influence infected the lives of both his son and grandson. Deaf and addicted to crack cocaine and heroin, Johnson Sr. was arrested for s assaulting his seven-year-old daughter three times and forced his son to translate for him during drug deals, according to BuzzFeed. He blamed himself for instilling the behavior that left his son facing a 50-year prison sentence. I know that my son was a good kid growing up, the father told the news through a sign language interpreter. We never had a good relationship. I'm still shocked this happened. I can't believe it, he added. Johnson Jr.'s son, also named Sheldon Johnson, made headlines in 2008 when he attacked a 24-year-old Columbia University graduate student, Mingi Yu, near the corner of Broadway and West 122nd Street in Morningside Heights, punching his victim repeatedly in the face. Yu stumbled into traffic in an attempt to flee his teenage attacker, but was struck and killed by a passing SUV. The youngest Johnson was charged with manslaughter for Yu's death and spent 18 months in a juvenile detention boot camp. In an interview on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, Johnson, who claimed he used to be a member of the Bloods gang, told host Josh Dubin he was arrested and sentenced to a maximum of 50 years for using a gun to rob several men who owed him money for drugs. As a blood, he was at the top of the food chain and for some time, he continued in his leadership role even while behind bars. But after spending some time in and out of solitary confinement, the convicted felon said he decided to turn his life around and got his GED while in prison. In 2005, Mr. Johnson said he began to rethink the drug dealing, the guns and the gang life. He wanted to leave it all behind. I had a wife, I had family still, my son was growing up. Um, he was hearing stories about my so-called uh, notoriety and um, I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to be that dad. Got my GED. Um, I left the gangs alone, which was a benefit for them because you know I was what you call an authoritarian. I was a rule guy. I'm, I'm still a rule guy. I like rules. You know, I like rules. I like structure. I got into school. I got my GED. 
Um, from there, I got involved in um, correspondence courses. I started interacting with guys who were teaching ART, aggression replacement training, and I started to begin to understand how these concepts work, what positive visualization is, um, deep breathing, how to remove yourself, conflict resolution. I said to myself, I've been doing bad for so long, I'm going to try to do something good, he added. If all else fails, I could always go back to doing something bad. But let me try. Let me give it a shot. Johnson Jr.'s 50-year sentence for the 1997 robbery would have left him ineligible for parole until 2041, but advocacy and support resulted in his release with time served last May. Following his release, Sheldon Johnson Jr.'s work with the Queen's Defenders put him in the orbit of local politicians including Alvin Bragg, who can be seen shaking hands with Johnson Jr. in a picture on the ex-con's Facebook profile. The Facebook page entitled Free Sheldon Johnson was created in June 2021 and featured the ex-con's prison writings, including memoirs in which he details his early life and recounts the pride he felt upon surviving his first trip to Rikers Island. Where I grew up, Rikers was a rite of passage, read a May 2022 Facebook post. When you survived a trip to Rikers with your swag intact, clothes still on your back and sneakers on your feet, you were given a sense of respect, notoriety. Okay, so just a little bit about the word on the street. Sheldon Johnson Jr., aka Superb, was a known figure from Foster Projects. As we stated, he had been known for putting in work from the 90s. The victim in this story, Small, would also know of Perb's temperament because he too had a rep in Foster Projects. Small went by the name, Booby. What makes this crazy is that these two, Small and Perb, were said to be crime associates back in the days. Perb was older than Small, the big homie, and had been putting on in the projects. He talks more in detail about his crimes on The Joe Rogan Show. He would go to jail, Rikers, where he would be engulfed in the war against the Latin Kings and the Niethas. After Perb's reign in Foster, Small would enforce a drug crew out of Foster. We once did a story on Foster projects, and the guys we spoke about in the beginning of that story are basically peers of the guys in this story. Whatever fallout Perb and Small had was unclear, as Small had once looked up to Perb. Anyway, this story is developing, but Perb is on his way back to jail until further notice. We are not going to get into how Perb gets down in jail. If you know, you know. However, he should not have issues in jail, because how he gets down is not new news, plus, he is said to have a knife game. But this about wraps this story up though, and as always, stay low and thanks for watching.